The 90s was a fascinating time for pop culture, with many of the movies of the time going on to become either all-time classics or cult hits swiftly after. Many of these films featured notable cars, and guess what? Not all those cool cars were fakes for the movie. Some of them were real. These are the 11 most incredible and forgotten vehicles from 1990s movies that actually exist. Number 11. The Reinforced Truck from Universal Soldier Most movie trucks featured in action films are large, powerful vehicles, but the one used in Universal Soldier was a cut above the rest. It started as a Kenworth K100, a type of truck that movie enthusiasts might recognize as the same model driven by the T-1000 in the famous chase scene of Terminator 2. However, even the Terminator's truck can't compete with this beast. A two-inch coating of solid steel was applied to the K-100 base, which was then sculpted to give the truck a futuristic military finish. Once that was done, an expanding 12-foot trailer was added to create the illusion that the truck was wide enough to host the command post featured in the movie. The Kenworth K-100 itself is an iconic model in the trucking world, known for its durability and versatility. Introduced in the 1960s, it became a favorite among long-haul truckers for its cab over-engine design, which maximized cargo space while still adhering to length regulations. Its robust construction and reliable performance made it an ideal candidate for transformation into a movie prop. This truck's makeover for Universal Soldier showcases the ingenuity and craftsmanship of movie prop designers, who took a commercial vehicle and turned it into a menacing military machine. This reinforced model was used for most of the scenes, except for the climactic shot where it plunges into a canyon and is destroyed. That dramatic effect was achieved using a scale model of the truck, only one-tenth of the original size. Thus, the real truck survived, but its current whereabouts remain unknown. Kenworth trucks are known for their durability and are often used in long-haul transportation, which makes this custom modification even more impressive. Number 10. The Shaguar from Austin Powers There weren't many movies released during the 1990s that were funnier than Austin Powers' International Man of Mystery. If you've seen the movie, you already know that Austin's vehicle of choice was a 1970 E-Type Jaguar, extensively modified to suit his eccentric tastes. You like my cars? This is my car, my Shaguar. In the movies, it's famously called the Shaguar. Our British viewers understand the playful and slightly risque connotation of that name. It took 400 man-hours for the film's producers to convert the 4.2-liter Jaguar into a car worthy of a secret agent. The Union Jack livery is the most obvious and visible piece of custom design work, but the modifications didn't stop there. The Jaguar E-Type, often referred to as the Jaguar XKE, in North America, is celebrated as one of the most beautiful and iconic sports cars ever produced. It was introduced in 1961 and quickly became a symbol of 1960s motoring with its sleek design and impressive performance. The car's top speed of 150 mi Tiazir and its 0.60 mi Tiamper time of under 7 seconds were remarkable for the era, making it a favorite among car enthusiasts and collectors. The E-Type's blend of aesthetics and engineering excellence has earned it a permanent display at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. The car also boasts a custom leather interior, a handmade red convertible top, unique floor carpets, and chrome wheels not found on any other Jaguar. This iconic car has appeared on eBay a few times over the years and is now owned by a private collector. The E-Type Jaguar itself is renowned for its stunning looks and high performance, often cited as one of the most beautiful cars ever made. Number 9. The Murf Mobile from Wayne's World A baby blue AMC Pacer from 1976 might seem more like the kind of vehicle you'd take to the scrapyard rather than pay big money for, but that's only if you don't know its history. This particular vehicle is better known as the Murph Mobile. If that doesn't ring any bells, think of the iconic rendition of Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody, performed in Wayne's World. That's right, it's the car from Wayne's World. Originally pink, the car was painted blue for its starring role in the film. Other customizations made specifically for the movie include tow hooks, 
flame decals, and a hole in the roof to accommodate a licorice dispenser. The AMC Pacer, produced by American Motors Corporation from 1975 to 1980, was notable for its unique and futuristic design, characterized by its large glass area and wide stance. It was marketed as the first wide small car, offering more interior space than most compact cars of the time. Despite its innovative design, the Pacer faced criticism for its unusual looks and poor fuel economy, leading to a mixed reception in the market. However, its role in Wayne's World transformed it into a cult classic, appreciated for its quirky charm and association with the film. Unfortunately, the licorice dispenser was never functional and is no longer in the vehicle. The car was last seen at a public auction in 2016, where it sold for an unexpected $37,400. The AMC Pacer, often criticized for its unconventional design, gained a cult following due to its role in the movie, proving that sometimes cinematic fame can transform perceptions of even the quirkiest vehicles. Number 8. Blade's 1968 Dodge Charger the character Blade never had a car when he appeared in comic books, but it was decided that one would be required when the first Wesley Snipes-led Blade movie was released in 1998. What kind of vehicle would a super cool half-human, half-vampire character drive? Instead of a modern supercar, the film's producers decided to take a retro approach and give him a black 1968 Dodge Charger. Externally, the car was completely authentic but inside, it was equipped with a variety of superhero weapons, including UV lights to melt vampires and a holster upon which Blade could mount his shotgun. The same car was used during the filming of all three movies, with the only difference between the film vehicle and the kind you drive on the road being a 383 Magnum engine instead of the mass-produced 446 pack. The 1968 Dodge Charger is a classic American muscle car, renowned for its aggressive styling and powerful performance. It was part of the second generation of Chargers, and featured a new Coke bottle design, which became iconic. The Charger was not just popular in movies, but also in real-life drag racing and car shows. Making it a symbol of the muscle car era. Its use in the Blade movies further cemented its status as a cultural icon, merging the worlds of automotive and cinematic legend. A private owner from Canada purchased the vehicle after production wrapped on the third movie. By 2006, it was available on Craigslist for a mere $40,000. It's unknown what happened to it after that. This particular Dodge Charger, with its unique modifications and cinematic history, remains one of the most memorable cars in movie history. Owning such a vehicle would be a dream for any car enthusiast or movie memorabilia collector, blending the allure of classic car culture with Hollywood mystique. Number 7. The DeLorean from Back to the Future the DeLorean is a car that was made famous by the Back to the Future movies. Every time you see a DeLorean, you can't help but wonder whether it's really a time machine. Only one of the DeLorean vehicles used in the movies has ended up in private hands, and it's hiding a big secret. It isn't actually a DeLorean at all. A father and son from Massachusetts went 50-50 on buying the prop from the third Back to the Future movie in 2011 and paid a total of $440,000 for the privilege. That's a high price to pay for a car that's actually a cunningly disguised Volkswagen Beetle. The DeLorean DMC-12, originally manufactured by the DeLorean Motor Company in the early 1980s, was known for its distinctive stainless steel body and gullwing doors. Despite its unique appearance, the car was plagued by production delays and financial troubles, leading to the company's bankruptcy in 1982. However, its starring role in the Back to the Future trilogy revived its popularity and turned it into a cultural icon. The car's futuristic look and association with time travel have kept it in the public eye long after its production ceased. The story here is that the DeLorean DMC-12 couldn't cope with driving across the desert sets that the third movie featured, 
And so a solution was required. That solution involved taking the steel body of the DeLorean and turning it into a tube chassis around the VW Beetle. The Beetle is much more suited to being a dune buggy, and so it could perform the duties required of it easily. The Volkswagen Beetle, known for its durability and simplicity, provided the necessary reliability for the film's demanding scenes. This ingenious modification ensured that the iconic look of the DeLorean was preserved, while enhancing its performance for the rugged desert environment. Now, it's time for the Sweet Topic. You probably don't recognize this car. That's why we've saved it to the Sweet Topic on our list, because it's something of a weird anomaly so maybe doesn't belong on the main list. You see, this car was the star of a 90s movie that didn't actually get released. A whole movie was made about a kid with a magical flying car and the adventures they go on together. Sounds pretty cute, right? The problem is the actor who played the dad got into seriously legal trouble. We can't name him, but the situation got so bad the studio couldn't risk releasing the film with him attached. They had no choice but to shelve it. The poor kid actor in the lead never got his chance to be a star. We never saw the adventures of this magical car. The producer of the film kept the car, taking it home a small memento. But as you can see, the last few decades have not been kind. With the producer no longer alive and the car left to rot and be forgotten, it's a dark symbol of the fate that fell the movie itself. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag number sign sweet topic. Number 6. The Jurassic Park Jeep Here's a famous movie car you can make yourself if you have the time, money, and inclination. The iconic Jeep from the original 1992 Jurassic Park movie. In America, there's a small group of enthusiasts who devote their time to taking Jeeps and turning them into Jurassic Park cars through modification. In essence, all the vehicles are Jeep Wranglers, but they contain a few differences from the models which were intended for home use. For a start, they have a special custom dashboard, and the tops were removed to make way for special glass panels to allow the park's visitors a better view of the dinosaurs. They're a distinctive type of Jeep, too. The YJ body variant of the Wrangler was sold from 1987 to 1995, and is so far the only open-top version to come with square headlights, a style which was more commonly seen on Wagoneers or Cherokees. The Jeep Wrangler YJ was the first generation of the Wrangler, introduced as a replacement for the CJ series. It featured a more comfortable ride and improved handling while retaining the rugged off-road capabilities that Jeeps are known for. The YJ's square headlights were a controversial design choice, but have since become a distinctive feature of this generation. Its role in Jurassic Park has made it a favorite among Jeep lovers and movie fans alike, who often seek to replicate the iconic look of the movie vehicles. Some of the original Jeeps from the 1990s films are known to be at Universal Studios, although they've been maintained and modified heavily since their time in front of the cameras. These Jeeps have become valuable collector's items, with their movie history adding to their appeal. The continued interest in these vehicles highlights the enduring popularity of Jurassic Park and its impact on car culture. Whether as a DIY project or a prized collector's piece, the Jurassic Park Jeep remains a symbol of adventure and cinematic magic. Number 5. The Men in Black Ford LTD Crown, Victoria Men in Black was one of the biggest science fiction hit movies of the 1990s when it was released in 1997. The film starred Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones as a pair of secret agents tasked with keeping the world safe from alien invasions, using all the latest technology to do so. What kind of space-age vehicle would they drive around in then? Well, what else other than the 1986 Ford LTD Crown Victoria? In the film, the car contained a special button that enabled it to enter turbo mode and drive upside down. Sadly, the prop car used in the film doesn't have any such magical powers, although it has been bulked up and modified to make it seem more high-tech. The Ford LTD Crown Victoria, often referred to simply as the Crown Vic, was a full-size sedan that became a staple in American law enforcement and taxi fleets due to its reliability, spaciousness, and durability. Introduced in the 1980s, it featured a body-on-frame construction, making it easier to repair and modify. Its use in Men in Black capitalized on its familiar and authoritative presence, making it a fitting choice for the secretive and powerful agents. 
The prop turned up for sale on Craigslist a few years ago, along with a certificate of authenticity and a collection of other memorabilia from the film. The Ford Crown Victoria used in Men in Black was equipped with numerous modifications to enhance its appearance and functionality for the movie, including custom lighting, reinforced bumpers, and various hidden compartments. These features added to the car's mystique and made it an integral part of the film's futuristic and clandestine aesthetic. Sadly, it only has 180 horsepower, so that turbo mode is out of the question. The Crown Victoria, with its storied history in both real life and film, continues to be a beloved vehicle, emblematic of its era and the roles it played in popular culture. Number 4. The BMW Z8 from James Bond's The World Is Not Enough During the Pierce Brosnan James Bond movie The World Is Not Enough, the world's most famous secret agent drove a BMW Z8. BMW produced many Z8s between 1999 and 2003. So, what made this particular one so special? The answer lies in the fact that at the time of the movie's production, the real car was only in the testing phase. BMW only had a prototype shell of the vehicle and one functioning test car. They were not willing to loan the test car to the movie studio, so the Z8 seen on screen in the film is actually a completely unique kit car made from the shell and any available parts the production company could find. Two versions of the Z8 were ultimately made for the film, one of which can be found at the London Film Museum. The BMW Z8, designed by Henrik Fisker and influenced by the BMW 507, was introduced as a halo car for BMW, featuring a 4.9-liter V8 engine producing 400 horsepower. It was capable of accelerating from 0 to 60 many APH in just 4.7 seconds, making it a true performance car of its era. The car's blend of classic aesthetics with modern engineering quickly made it a collectible item. Its aluminum space frame and hand-finished details added to its exclusivity and desirability. The other Z8 was sold into private ownership during an auction in 2012. Oh, what a car. It wasn't roadworthy at the time of the sale, but there's nothing to say the new owner hasn't done anything to change that fact in the years since then. The rarity of the movie-specific Z8s adds to their intrigue and value, making them highly sought after by collectors and James Bond fans alike. Owning a piece of cinematic history like the Z8 not only brings a connection to the film, but also to the legacy of BMW's engineering excellence. Number 3. The Batmobile from Batman for Eve Here's a piece of movie trivia that Batman fans probably know already. The Batmobile is never used twice. That means every time there's a new Batman movie, there's a new Batmobile, and so the old one is surplus to requirements. We've already seen what happened to the Batmobile from Batman Returns. Now here's the Batmobile from Batman Forever. The sleek, cartoonish version of the car isn't to everybody's tastes. Some people think it looks futuristic and edgy, but others think the fin makes it look more like a shark than a bat. Perhaps that's why it only fetched $165,000 at auction in 2015. When it was built in 1995, it's understood to have cost $2,500,000 to put together. The Batmobile for Batman Forever was designed by Tim Flattery and incorporated many intricate details and neon lighting to match the film's vibrant aesthetic. The car featured a single-seat cockpit, elongated fins, and an open-wheel design, which differentiated it from its predecessors. Despite its divisive appearance, the Batmobile was equipped with a fully functional Chevrolet V8 engine and had working headlights making it drivable, although Warner Brothers restricted its use on public roads. The vehicle has a fully functional Chevrolet V8 engine and could be driven on the road, but strangely, Warner Brothers made it a condition of the sale that the new owner could never drive it in public. That makes it little more than an expensive garage toy. The 1997 version of the Batmobile built for the disastrous movie Batman and Robin was a more traditional offering. The producers didn't want a repeat of the controversy that came with the design of the 1995 car and so opted for something bulkier and more functional. Taking design inspiration from the D-Type Jaguar, it was the largest Batmobile ever built, with a length exceeding 30 feet, capable of accelerating up to 140 miles per hour. That's impressive pace for a movie prop. It may have gone even faster if it didn't have enormous fins at the back. 
which caused some aerodynamic drag. Even the wheels on this car had to be custom made with a 22 inch diameter and treads that were stamped with the Bat logo. The six exhausts at the back of the vehicle which form a V-shape aren't just there for decoration, they're the only way of ensuring the car moves in a straight line when it accelerates. It looked great, but wasn't all that practical. Number 2. The Pontiac Banshee from Knight Rider 2000 when Knight Rider was reimagined as Knight Rider 2000 for a 1991 TV movie, it was decided that a brand new car would be required to replace the iconic black kit car from the original series. That car was a Pontiac Banshee, or to be more specific, a Pontiac Banshee were four, as unveiled by the company in 1988. For its time, this car was very futuristic. It was sleek, it had a triangular hood, and it had a heads-up display system, which would be considered advanced technology even in this day and age. At 201 inches long, it was a beast of a vehicle and represented a leap forward in technology. The steering wheel alone had 20 buttons on it, some of which operated numerous onboard cameras. The Pontiac Banshee I-4 was a concept car that showcased Pontiac's vision for the future of automotive design and technology. It featured advanced aerodynamics, a lightweight fiberglass body, and a high-tech interior. The Banshee IFE's design elements, such as its pop-up headlights and futuristic dashboard, were ahead of their time and influenced the styling of future Pontiac models. Despite its innovative design, the Banshee I-4 never went into production, remaining a unique prototype that captured the imagination of car enthusiasts. The version of the car that appeared in the TV movie was heavily modified, although it turned out to be impractical for some of the filming. In many scenes, a very well-disguised 1991 Dodge Stealth ES had to be used as a stand-in. The Dodge Stealth, known for its sporty design and performance, provided a reliable alternative for the more challenging driving scenes. This clever use of two different vehicles ensured that the iconic look of the Banshee 4 was maintained while still delivering the action-packed sequences that fans expected. The combination of the Pontiac Banshee 4 and the Dodge Stealth highlights the creativity and resourcefulness of the production team in bringing the futuristic vision of Knight Rider 2000 to life. Number 1. Christian Bale's Batman vs. Michael Keaton's Batmobile Christian Bale probably provided the most iconic Batman performance of the past few decades, but we'd have to put Michael Keaton's early 1990s incarnation of the character in second place. We'd also have to say that Keaton's Batman had the coolest Batmobile. Just look at this gorgeous version of the vehicle from the 1992 film Batman Returns. It would have been a tragedy if this beautiful car had been scrapped after filming wrapped, and so comedian Jeff Dunham has made sure it avoided that fate. Dunham purchased the movie vehicle in 2011 and has since spent half a million dollars refurbishing it. He's done such a good job that it's now been approved for him to drive on the road. The souped-up Batmobile now contains a Corvette engine and five cameras, which allow the driver a panoramic view of the world world outside the car. The 1992 Batmobile, designed by Anton First, is a blend of futuristic design and gothic aesthetics, making it one of the most memorable versions of the iconic vehicle. First's design was influenced by 1930s cars, with elongated lines and a low profile, giving it a menacing and sleek appearance. This Batmobile featured advanced technology and weaponry, including grappling hooks, oil slick dispensers, and a bulletproof exterior, embodying the duality of Batman's character as both a sophisticated detective and a dark Avenger. The car's design became so iconic that it was used in subsequent Batman media, including animated series and comic books. The real Batman would be proud of that kind of technology. Sadly, he wasn't quite able to get the authorities to sign off on the idea of using the grappling hook to swing around corners. This Batmobile is not only a piece of cinematic history, but also a testament to the creativity and engineering prowess of its designers. Jeff Dunham's efforts to restore and enhance the vehicle have ensured that this iconic piece of movie memorabilia continues to capture the imagination of Batman fans around the world. Owning and driving such a vehicle offers a unique blend of nostalgia and cutting-edge technology, making it a dream come true for any Batman enthusiast. Which of these amazing 90s movie vehicles is your dream ride? What do you think of this? Let us know in the comments.